Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. It's week seven of the beginner sampler quilt along and we're making the counter change block. So if you wanna see how to make a block like this, please stay tuned. <laughs> I'm really excited to continue our beginner sampler quilt series. So far we've done six blocks and today we're on to the seventh. The block that we've chosen or the block that I've chosen is this block here. It's called counter change. So what I'm going to do is, um, is I'm going to take a second and zoom in on this um, picture so you can see the block. And then I have a few little tips that are little pointers that I want to make to you um, as well. Again, like I say every um, video, the inspiration for this sampler quilt is coming from the Block A Day book. It says 365 quilting squares for patchwork inspiration. It's by Lucinda Ganderton and as it says, it has 365 different quilt patterns that you can make um, so that if you made one a, a day for a whole year, you would have 365 um, blocks. Um, the blocks that we're using for this quilt only use uh, squares and rectangles. So it's hopefully pretty simple. If you're a beginner and you want to get started with something, this could be a possibility for you. Let's zoom in and talk a little bit more about the counter change block. So before we um, dig into our current block, I wanted to highlight a couple of the other blocks because they have something in common with the block that we're doing today. This block is the checker square block, and what is interesting about it is that it uses eight squares and four rectangles. So we see the four center squares, and then four corner squares, and then four rectangles that surround the block. Um, in this one, the center uh, blocks, they form a, a four patch, and then the uh, corner squares are contrasting. Now here's the next one. This is the most recent block, the Roman Tees block. And even though it might not look like it, it has the same configuration, four center squares, and then uh, four corner triangles, and, nope, that's not right, four corner squares, and then four rectangles. So this block is sort of the exact same, except that um, the difference is the way that the colors are oriented. So in these, the, um, in this block, the corner squares um, match a rectangle next to them. So you can see that. And so it's very interesting. In our block that we're going to do today, the checkers, the counter change block, let me zoom in on it a little bit. You're going to notice the same thing. There are eight squares in this block. They're all in the center row and then four rectangles on the top four rectangles on the bottom. Because of the way that these squares are oriented in the quilt, we get to try a new technique today. So let's cut some fabric. As we get ready to cut our pieces for the um, counter change block, I'm going to do a different technique from what I've done on the other blocks. In the other blocks, I was able to uh, cut squares and sew them together. But in this block, I'm actually gonna sew um, two long strips of, pe of fabric together to get those squares and that's called strip piecing. So today we get to try strip piecing. I have gone back to some of my um, older fabrics that I was using for this quilt. I went back to the background fabric because I've done a couple of, um, of blocks that didn't have it and so I wanted to come back and make sure I've I use that this background fabric. I also brought out a um, this red with these hearts. I used it, I think, on the keyboard block, and I just wanted to come back to have a coordinating fabric with the background. So to get ready to cut this, I'm going to start with the red. I am using my strip uh, my strip cut ruler again, and I am going to cut uh, two large pieces out of this um, piece of fabric. I'm, well, I'm cutting one and then I'm gonna cut it down into smaller pieces. I need a four and a half inch strip because my individual parts of this block are all gonna be four and a half inch um, pieces. So I'm gonna start with the a four and a half inch strip and then I'm gonna cut it down to two pieces 
one about 20 inches and then one about um, 17 inches or maybe 18 inches just to have a nice round number. So I'm using my shape cut, not my strip cut, my shape cut. And I've cut the, um, this is my four and a half inch strip. Uh oh, didn't get it all. Okay, I might have to get a, um, a straight edge and line it up with this. I'll try it with my ruler here. I guess I, I didn't get enough leverage because I wasn't standing. Usually when I, um, when I cut with my rotary cutter, I like to stand so I get a little more leverage. Okay, so there's my four and a half inches. And so now I'm going to uh, get a 20 inch strip and then I'm gonna get about a 18 inch strip. So let's see, I didn't bring my, um, my straight edge over here. So I'm just gonna I'm going to use my, um, my shape cut as my straight edge. Just lining up the lines on the line. This is not normally what I would do, but for the sake of the video and the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. And so this is going to be my four and a half inch by 20 inch. And I'm just lining it up. I'm lining the shape cut um, up with the ruler. Okay. And then I'm going to cut another piece. Actually, I think what I'll do for this, I'll go ahead and get my four and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles out of this instead of um, making a cut and then having to cut it down twice. So here's one eight and a half inch rectangle. Okay. And then here's the second eight and a half inch rectangle. Now I'm going to get the same three pieces from my uh, background fabric, but the difference is that this one is not quite uh, 40 inches wide. So I'm going to make two four and a half inch cuts to get those, um, to get those measurements. So here we go. Lining up the zero line with the bottom of the ruler. I'm going to square up this edge. and then make two four and a half inch cuts. So I'm cutting once at four and a half and then once at nine inches. Okay. And now using the same procedure, I'm going to get my 20 inch strip And this one has a little bit of selvage on it, so I'm gonna make sure I cut the selvage off first. And then the 20. Okay, and I think I have enough um, of this left over to get one of the eight and a half inch rectangles. I don't know though, because the fabric is a little bit bowed right here. So I'm gonna see if I can get it out of the not bowed part. And if not, I'll just get both pieces out of the other part. And yet I can't get it out of this, which is fine. So I will cut two eight and a half inch rectangles from this piece. which is also a little bold. I don't think it's gonna matter. I'm gonna do my best to not make it not matter. <laughs> so let's get this cut and then we'll start sewing. So I brought the book over so that I can look at the um, pattern as I sew. So I make sure I put everything together the correct way. But um, in the book, they don't put it together the exact same way that I'm going to put put it together. They don't use um, string, strip piecing, they just use the
the individual squares to, show, to put everything together. Um, I'm going to take first these two long strips, the four and a half by 20 inches. And I don't quite need 20 inches, but I'm giving myself some extra room here so that when I cut my uh, rectangles down, I know that I'm gonna have enough fabric. I think I'm only gonna need 18 inches, but sewing the 20 inches gives me that little bit of extra room that I need. And so I'm just going to um, sew down one side. I have the, um, the edges of both fabrics lined up. I'm using a quarter inch seam to, um, to sew this. I do need to say also, just as a reminder, I've said this in all my other videos, in the book, um, the blocks will finish at 12 inches once they're in a quilt. They, they'll be 12 and a half inches when you get done sewing them. My blocks are going to be, the goal is for them to be 16 and a half inches. And so in the book, the measurements are a little bit smaller than what I'm doing. So like they're using, I don't know, six and a half or something. I don't know because their blocks are, are finishing at 12 and a half. But since mine are going to be 16 and a half, that's why I'm using larger four and a half inch units and why my rectangles are eight and a half inches. Okay, so I'm finishing up this strip. Normally I would finger press this, but I think uh, because it's so long, I'm just going to go straight to the iron and press. And I don't think that I've ever pressed on camera, so I'm going to do that as well. So I'm finishing this up now. It doesn't take very long to stitch. And then we're going to go to the ironing board and press this fabric. So it's time to press my fabric here. I'm going to scoot down a little bit. Hopefully you can still see um, what I'm pressing. I have my darker fabric on top. I'm going to press what we call to the dark side. So I'm going to press so that the seam allowance will point towards this darker fabric. I'm going to start by uh, setting the seam. That's just where you place the iron on the thread. It relaxes the thread and, and so that it goes a little better into the fabric. Okay. And I am um, pressing on the cotton setting and I use steam. I prefer steam. There, um, there are differing schools of thought about whether to use steam or if you use steam at first and then whatever, whatever. I just always use steam. And then I'm taking the iron and rolling, um, rolling that fabric back so that it is underneath the, the seam allowance is going to be underneath the red fabric. So I'm going to show you that here and then we're going to cut this down. I went and grabbed my shape cut ruler again because the thing with strip piecing is that you stitch long pieces of fabric together and then you cut it down into the rectangle size that you want. Now my rectangle size that I'm looking for is eight and a half inches. So I'm actually lining up my center line here with, or I'm lining up my seam line with one of the lines on the ruler. And it happens right now to be the four inch line. And I'm going to square off on this side and then I'm gonna cut two four and a half rectangles and then I'm gonna move the, um, the ruler over and cut the other four and a half inch rectangles. So here we go, here's one. And when I say four and a half inch, it's not really, I'm cutting a rectangle, but it's really four and a half by about eight and a half because the two pieces are stitched together. So here's four and a half and nine. Okay. And here are two of my rectangles. And then I'm going to move the fabric over and get the other two. Again, lining up the seam line on one of the lines on my ruler. Okay, squaring up this end and stitch and cutting, not stitching. So it's again four and a half and nine. 
Um, since I'm only cutting one layer of fabric, I am sitting. If I was cutting more than one layer, I would stand. Um, this little extra piece, it can go in my strings or in my crumbs to have other pieces sewn onto it. So now we can go ahead and lay out this block. Again, I have the book here to help me remember. Um, but what's cool about this block is that it's really the same. Um, it's two of the same blocks. So, but I'm going to lay it out so that I know what's what. It doesn't matter what color goes where. You just have to make sure that everything is placed once you have your, um, your first set of colors. So here we go. All right, so this is the, the top two rectangles. And then whatever color the rectangle is, that color goes on the outside when you lay your other pieces. I see that. So since this is on the top, this these have to match. And then the same thing here. Since this is on the top, these have to match. And then we do the same thing or we, we do the opposite. So now this one will be on the outside and this one will be on the outside. Okay. And then you just switch them. Now, what's cool and interesting about this block, these two blocks, this one and this one, they're exactly the same. These two are exactly the same. Let me show you. So, this and this, and once I turn it, they're exactly the same. This, and then once I turn this, they're exactly the same. But I went ahead and laid them out so that um, I wouldn't get confused, but they are exactly the same. Now all I'm going to do is create quadrants. Um, in the last quilt, we sewed three rows together. For this one, we're gonna cre create the quadrants and then we're going to um, sew the block together. So I'm going to start by pressing or by putting the bottom fabric on top of the top fabric and then um, sewing these together. I Let me um, change the camera so that you can see this whole process. I'm getting ready to do my stitching here. I hope you can see it. So I'm going to start with the red rectangle um, units. I'm, pre I'm pushing the rectangle on top of the two, um, the, the two squares. And then I'm going to just stitch a quarter inch seam. They should match up because they're both at eight and a half inches. So this is going to be interesting because now I'm starting to think about pressing because I do want my seams to nest. So after I do the two red, I'm going to talk about how I want to press everything. And I hope it works. What I'm thinking of doing, I hope it works so that um, everything nests nicely. So the only thing that you really have to think about is making sure that your the seam goes the way that it's supposed to go, that it doesn't flip on you while you're stitching. So this is the other red rectangle unit. thinking about it some more and I'm nervous about this pressing but I think it's going to be fine Ooh. so here we go my presser foot is not quite in the right spot so I'm having to kind of find it All right, so I'm getting ready to pull my first red rectangle off. All right, and so for these units, I'm actually going to press toward the red, toward the rectangle. So I'm just going to finger press here towards this red rectangle. And they've lined up, fair, the uh, blocks have lined up fairly nice. 
So hopefully they're going to match. But there you go. You can see that. that it's pressed toward the two rectangles. So as I take the white triangle unit, I'm going to press those toward the smaller squares. Okay. It doesn't, um, I don't think that it matters which goes where, but I'm like which seam allowance goes to what side. But for me, since this uh, rectangle is white, I wouldn't want that red to show under it. In, instead of, if it shows, it'll show under that smaller square instead of showing all the way under that rectangle. The seam allowance shouldn't show under the red rectangle because it's a darker fabric. All right, and then for the next bit, this is that second red rectangle unit. So I'm going to press towards the rectangle here right there and then this is the last unit the last um, white rectangle unit or quadrant not unit done. This block is really easy to put together. I feel like especially using the string piece, the strip piecing, it made it really easy. Okay. So I'm going to pull both of these off at once and I'm pressing towards the two squares on these blocks. first one and you can go to the iron here if you want to I'm just choosing not to press it towards the two squares that's gonna have a little bit of fighting me on this it doesn't want to do that so when I press it I'll just make sure to um, to go ahead and press it pretty tough not tough but but give it a nice press so that it stays because typically the seam allowance wants to go where there's least resistance. So where there's no seam would be better than where there is a seam. All right. I want to check the camera and make sure you can see. And you can't see all of it. So let me zoom out. Actually, I'm going to move the camera. Okay. I have all four pieces, all four quadrants ready to put together. All I really have to do is flip this one over here and flip this one over here and we have our counter change block. The only thing left for me to do is stitch the rows. I'm going to stitch it together like a four patch. So I'm going to stitch these two and then these two and then I'm going to um, I'm going to put them together. So for these before I stitch them together, I'm, I need to think about pressing. And I'm going to press, when I stitch the, these two together, I'm going to press toward the red rectangle. So I know I have that in my brain. I know that I'm going to press toward the red rectangle. So I'm going to fold right over left, line up the edges. My middle seams will nest, so I'm going to hold those securely. Excuse me, hold those... Um, Pull those two seams securely so that they can get a nice nest. And then I'm going to stitch my quarter inch seam. Here we go. And this block is so quick and easy. I'm, I've already said that I know, but I can't believe that it's coming together this super fast. And if you have a lot of scraps, I can see this block as an all over block whether you added sashing or whatever using different co color combinations I think you can make a really striking quilt with the counter change block and the fact that it only uses squares and rectangles that also helps that makes it really fun and you don't have to 
think about it super hard, you can just go. Okay. So here's the next ones. Right over left. Seams will nest. It's going to be great. And now stitch, stitch, stitch. Hold it here and let her rip. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and pull both of them off at the same time. And since I've already figured out my pressing, it's going to be easy because I've already said I'm going to press toward the red rectangle. So here's the bottom section. I'm going to fold it back to the right and press both seams toward that red rectangle. All right, those didn't nest as much as, as nicely as I would li have liked them to, but it's going to be okay. All right, same thing here. And really, if I wanted to, I could have pushed them both to the... Well, no, it would have been pushing them both toward the white, but it's okay. I think it'll be all right. Same thing here, pressing toward the red rectangle. And for this block, we just have to hang it up high because they're, they're not as, the center points aren't as nice as I would like them to be. But I'm not going to stress about it. I'm going to put this block together and it's going to be fine. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put bottom over top. And stitch. There are four seams that need to be um, four seams that will, they all nest, but you want to make sure that they're lined up as you stitch. So here we go. And I'm just I'm stopping the machine just so I can line up my my seams, make sure that they're gonna. That they're going to do what they need to do. Hopefully this row will be better than the other two. Okay. And then at each intersection, like each time I just stop the machine to line up the seams. And stop, line up the seams. Hopefully these will be better. And then the last one, line up the seams and then we got it done. Or line up the edges of the fabric, not the seams. All right, and at this point I can decide which way I wanna press. I have no idea right now. I'm just going to press to the right because that's my normal um, side that I like to press to. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then we have a completed block. I'm going to give this block a nice press and then we'll take it downstairs and put it with all the other blocks. So here's our completed block, the counter change block, along with all the other six blocks that we've um, made as a part of our beginner sampler. As I look at it right now, there are two more blocks that I would like to make. I haven't decided them yet, but I'm excited about what they're gonna look like. I'm interested now to think about where to place them in the quilt and also choosing some kind of sashing. So I'm thinking about those things right now. If you have any ideas about sashing, whether we should go with a light neutral or a bolder, um, fabric, I really don't know. I'm going to shop in my stash and see what I have first before I make a final decision. But I think it's going to be really exciting to see this thing come together. If you have any questions about what you've seen, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Also, check out all of the other videos for the Beginner Sampler Quilt. I hope that you are watching and following along, maybe even making the blocks with us. That would be amazing. Um, Thumbs up this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!